And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare a son, Cain. And she said, I have begotten a man from the Lord. Cain means possession. And she again bare another son, Abel. And Abel was the keeper of sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. Now, you can't separate these stories because the ground was just now cursed and man entered into this day of darkness, of fallen creation. And he said, you will till the ground, which is cursed. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. But God made Adam and Eve clothes of skin. These are patterns that played out in individuals' lives. There was a real Cain and there was a real Abel. But the pictures that is portrayed here in Types and Shadows are so important. It reveals the purposes of God if you can understand it in the Spirit. Now verse 3. In the process of time. I just love the sentence. In the process of time. There's a progression of revelation. In the process of time, all these things played out. And Ecclesiastes says, there's a time to be born and a time to die and a time to this and a time to that. He talks about the cycles. But in the beginning, he said, there's a time for every purpose, for everything, not a thing for every time. So time literally works the purposes of God. In the process of time, Cain worked the land and Abel was a shepherd. And then they came to worship God and offer to God because there's this hole in everybody's soul. I mean, even in people today where they've never heard God, they want to offer their children, they offer everything because they think they can appease God that way. God can only be appeased by God himself. Cain brought of the field and Abel brought of the sheep. And of course, if you look at the patterns, God was pleased with Abel's offer, but that turned on the envy within Cain. God appeared to Cain and he said to him, sin is lying at your door. God's actually telling him, don't open this door. What did he do? He opened the door, killed his brother. This is a door of envy that will destroy someone else. It's only for jealousy that you'll ever kill someone. It's only for jealousy that you'll talk about someone. This is principles laid down. And then he had the audacity when God came to him, he says, why must I know where my brother is? Am I my brother's keeper? So what that tells us is that we are not secluded or separated. We belong. You belong to God and you belong to the body. We are brothers. And the Bible says we're brothers dwell together. It's like the oil that comes down from the beard of Aaron. But Cain opened a door here. Man does not just now return to dust. Now the ground cries for blood. In the sweat of your brow, you will eat your bread. Jesus came and said, I'm the bread of life. They didn't receive him. Now his sweat became blood so we can have bread. Oh, this is God's purposes set in the heavens. And God said, what have you done, Cain? Your voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. In Hebrews 12, he said, we have come to the city to the blood that cries of better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel cries for revenge. The blood of Jesus came and answered that cry because Jesus became the door that opened the realm of heaven right here on earth. Because in Revelation, he says, come up higher. It doesn't say the door is in heaven. The door is here, but it's a realm that you step in where you live the higher life right here on earth. Cain now opened the door and he had to leave the presence of God. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And that is to leave the presence of God. So Cain is literally portraying the seed line of the fallen humanity. And he said, behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from thy face. Shall I be hid? And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that find me shall slay me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever will slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him and sevenfold. 
And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Now, please, the mark of Cain is not a racist mark. You can't say that race is, they carry the mark of Cain because there was no racist. Races only came at the Tower of Babel, the different nations and populations, when there was a dividing of races. So this mark means that even man in his fallen situation, God will take care of him. And this is also a picture of Babylon where Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of the tree that was cut down for seven years, seven periods. So he says here, if anybody touches you, Vengeance will be taken sevenfold. So God is declaring that in man's fallen situation, God still looks after him. Cain had five children. The first one was called Enoch. And this was a desire for him to be part of what God has. Because when God gave Adam another seed, Seth, the seventh one was Enoch. And Enoch was the one that did not die. He had communion with God. He fellowshiped with God and he skipped death totally. So Cain's first child was a cry of humanity for the purposes of God. And this we find all through the Old Testament. But Cain had five children and the last one was Lamech. And he had two wives. And he had children and he went to his wives and he said to them, my father was revenged seven times, but I have done worse and I will be revenged 70 times seven. This is a principle laid down because Israel was taken to Babylon for 70 years. So God worked them for a perfect time. God worked on earth with these people, but they didn't listen. And now he said, seal the vision. It will be for 70 times seven years until the removal of everything. So these are pictures set before the flood of what is going to happen. And God's purposes is settled in the heavens. So even before the flood, we can see... <laughs> God knew exactly what he was doing and he's not changing for any man. There is no respecter of God with people. God's purposes are set as principles and we have to step in the plan of God. <music>